Sangena china botala zive njabuli sakuni nonge makaya. Good afternoon. You're watching the daily service delivery gauge on SABC One as well as the SABC News Channel. I'm Chris Alda Lewis. Thank you very much for joining us. And welcome to today's edition of the Daily Service Delivery Gauge, which there's 12 days to the local government polls. I'm Olisi Masang, signing for us today as Fortune Madala. Remember, this is your show, and we encourage you to participate in all the conversations that we're having on the show today. Do make use of our social media platforms. You can send us your WhatsApp voice notes, as well as voice notes and video clips as well. And of course, today, the question we are asking you on the program how badly has corruption hampered service delivery in your municipality? Now, the Tuesday edition of the Daily Service Delivery Gauge starts now. Very good afternoon to you once again. Thanks for joining us on SABC One as well as the SABC News Channel. So the Asvikelane Initiative gives a voice to informal settlement residents in South Africa's major cities who face severe basic service shortages. So uh, this is done by responding to questions monthly about their access to water, clean toilets and waste removal. Residents offer us a window into their daily experiences. So here to talk to us about this initiative is Senior Program Coordinator, Dr. Uh, at the Plan Act, and Dr. Mike Makwela, a very good afternoon to you, Dr. Mike. Thanks indeed for joining us. We appreciate it. So, how does this initiative work? It sounds fantastic, having to get people in informal settlements to participate and give voice to some of their challenges. No, good afternoon, uh, Chris Alden. Thanks for inviting Plan Act to this esteemed program, uh, service delivery gauge. Indeed, um, we work with communities across the country. It's not only Planet, we've got also other partner communities in Durban, in Cape Town, um, in East, East, Eastern Cape, etc., and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. what we do with this program called Asi Vigalan, it actually started uh, when COVID started. And we were concerned to say what is going to happen uh, during this period of COVID. Uh, and we, we were quite mindful that the municipalities will start shifting budgets mm -hmm. and forget about service delivery the provision of water, yeah. uh, uh, the cleaning of toilets, yeah. and, and refuse removal. So that's the basics of how it started. And so what we do, we have partner communities, and we identify com one, one or two community leaders who come together, and you literally um, uh, monitor the services without going around the settlement. Remember, mm -hmm. we're still under COVID. So right. you just have to watch whether my toilet has been dislodged Okay, right. which means it has been cleaned, uh, whether water is running, uh, whether, you know, say, um, waste has been collected. So you yes. don't really have to go around mm -hmm. and, and look at that. That communal toilet of yours, yes. you just have to monitor and make sure that um, the services are done. So that's what we do. And then uh, every week mm -hmm. uh, we ask uh, our community partners these three questions. Yes. Uh, whether waste has been collected, uh, uh, toilets have been cleaned, yeah. um, etc. And then we... Is this done via cell phone? Absolutely, All absolutely. Right? In interesting because these are these are times where you can't meet as a group. Correct. So we, we provide them with about money for, for, for data. Good. and they respond back to us. Okay. And we, we then put together a report, mm -hmm. uh, our monthly report, right. and we share it with the uh, min respective municipalities, Egorule in the city of Joburg, Eteguin, and so on and so forth, and say, these, they are, they, these are blind spots right. that you as a municipality have not been aware of. Okay. Remember, or not, or not all inf uh, 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 municipal officials can be everywhere, every time. Correct. So we play that role um, uh, and, and say uh, the fact that you have not been able to see what is happening in this in this Doesn't mean setting. that it's not happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So we play mm. that role. And, how and effective sure. has this been, and Dutty Mike, in that um, how many um, uh, informal settlements have been covered thus far? Because uh, as you correctly point out, we're still uh, within this pandemic. Um, managing, you know, uh, uh, contact to contact with persons using the cell phone, uh, adding that data certainly must help a lot. How many of these uh, informal settlements have you managed to get onto this program? We have over 300 of them. Wow. 
across the country, okay, in metros, in small municipalities, in middle municipalities. So that's a very exciting program mm. because it is communities that monitor uh, the service by themselves mm. and, and we become a bridge between the community and the municipality and say, hang on, uh, municipality, uh, there's a problem here. That tap has not had water for two or three weeks yeah. or for a month. Uh, waste has not been collected and so on and so forth. So when we put this this, this uh, report together, yeah. we then start engaging with the municipality. Mm. I must say... Um, but what has the response been like? We often hear from communities that the municipalities are very... Uh, 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 they're not quick at all to respond to their plight. Well, How is, what has your analysis been of well, it? Well, look, there, there, there's more that can be done. But I must be honest, yeah. there's been very positive responses. Right. Uh, the city of Joburg, mm -hmm. uh, Joburg Water, mm -hmm. uh, Guruleni Water and Sanitation Department, uh, Teguin and so on. So they've been responding very positively. Mm -hmm. Of course, you, ex you, you wish more can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, but I must say, you know, there's been very good reception on, on, on the work of Asif mm -hmm. uh, We so wish that we could cover all the informal settlement in the country. Unfortunately, you know, we're, we're all only limited. And with over know. 300, uh, you're obviously going to need a lot of backup in terms of trying to secure money for this uh, kind of data. How are you managing uh, uh, to work uh, with that through the program? Well, look, we, we, we look for funding, you know, okay. and there have been people that have been very generous yes. uh, to put money uh, into this uh, um, community-led uh, mm. monitoring process, and mm. we appreciate that. Uh, obviously, you need more. We, yes. uh, we wish we could scale ourselves. Sure. You know, there are prom pro provinces where we're not involved, you know, mm. Limpopo, you know, um, uh, North, Northern Cape mm. and, 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 and Free State. So we wish we could multiply ourselves. Mm. Um, but the, the, the little that we have done, and, and it can't just be little, in fact, mm. uh, when you see a community saying we don't have a... Uh, access to, to toilets, and all of a sudden you engage the municipality and they come and deliver those toilets. It's just a gumbaya. It's an excitement, mm. you know, to see that. Uh, and, and taps have been broken yeah. and, you, and, and it's been fixed by the municipality mm. and water runs. Uh, you know, it brings joys and, ex sure. and excitement. Obviously, you'd want more to be done. And I guess with the many challenges that, uh, you know, these municipalities are facing, they certainly cannot do it alone. So the Asvigilani Initiative certainly uh, does assist these communities to ensure that uh, they get uh, this uh, service delivery uh, when and uh, exactly when they want it to take place. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mike Makwela, who is a senior program coordinator at Plan Act. We really appreciate your time here on the program. So I think now uh, we remember, of course, we've been asking you to interact uh, with uh, us here on the program by sending us uh, some of uh, your messages uh, via WhatsApp. I would love to hear from you regarding that. Are those ready? I think they are. Good morning, service delivery gauge. This morning, I would like to bring it under your attention that the ANC government is allowing the PEC branches in the supply key municipality to give out title deeds of the people that were supposed to be given long time ago. So the departments and the heads of the departments are, are in cahoots with misleading the people now because they, they are garnering votes. Hi. Good day, viewers, listeners. I am Alepesha Timuti from Limpopo District in Mupane, local municipality in Marule. Okay, my challenge here is water. I want, we want water. So all I want is job. I'm not working, but they want my cross. So yes, I'm going to vote. Kadi one. So I can save it. I guess I'll be ready next time I'm not going. Thank you for giving us this platform as farm dwellers. Firstly, we do not have electricity. As I'm sending this video, I don't know if I'm going to see it on TV because there's no TV to watch every day. Number two, we do not have water. Every time we should call the municipalities to bring water with the law rest to us. So that is a great challenge here. 
Well, thank you for that interaction. Please do keep it coming because this is your show. On the question of today, we asked you how corruption has impacted service delivery in your municipality. Joining us now is Masuele Ralebona, who is our SABC News Specialist reporter. But before we speak to him, let's zoom in on the Mangawung and Fee State. Now, we are set to be joined by, of course, our SABC News political reporter from location, but we could not due to technical problems and concerns. Connecting. Now, that province currently has some high profile corruption cases in their courts, and to name but a few, former Transnet board member and Gupta family associate Iqbal Sharma, he is amongst 16 other accused who face charges relating to defrauding the Free State Department of Agriculture. There are now nine accused in the Free State Human Settlements fraud case involving a whopping 7.9 million rands. The Estina Dairy Farm saw a restraint order of about 249 million rand to the assets forfeiture unit was recently handed down in that corruption case. And as you saw earlier today, the 255 million rand free state asbestos corruption case was postponed to November the 3rd. Maswele, thank you so much for your time on the daily service delivery gauge. Yo, we busy crunching numbers. We're looking at how 250 Five, 255 million rands can change the lives of South Africans. Talk to us about that. Thank you, Mkolisi. You will remember that uh, during the Zondo Commission, a lot was said about the 255 million rands, mm. and some of the uh, uh, accused in this case accepted, did uh, uh, accept during that uh, hearing that the money was deposited, and we had some. Uh, papers writing about how the money was used. Mm. So uh, to bring it home, to link it to the service delivery, as you have already uh, said, we ask now uh, as to what can 255 million do yeah, in terms of service of South delivery. Africans, yeah. So in 2018, uh, uh, EFF MP uh, Konzi were uh, asked the question in Parliament to the Minister of uh, Human Settlement, then Minister of Human Settlement, uh, Noma India Mfeketo, as to what is how many houses uh, are needed in South Africa right now yeah. and how much is needed to, for, 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 and for here's that the money. Backlog. Yeah, we have it here, here up on the screen. You, as, as well. you can see, the yes. backlog from 2018 shows that at least 3.9 million houses were needed in South Africa then, and then six, 622 million, over 622 million was needed to cover this backlog. Um, this is, uh, the reason why we're doing this, we want to see mm -hmm. how 255 million rent, mm -hmm. uh, how far can 255 million rent go in it, terms of service delivery? Well, it can clearly go a long way. Uh, the, the, the next slide here will show you that uh, per province, mm. uh, the cost of RDP house uh, differs. Mm. Um, as you can see there, in Free State, 136,000 uh, 136, rand is needed for a proper uh, average uh, um, RDP house. Mm. And the highest is in uh, Western Cape, where about 183,000 uh, rand is needed to build an RDP house. So we divide the 255 a million rand by uh, the number, the cost of houses, of these houses in the Free State Province. Mm -hmm. And then we found that at least 1,872 families could have been provided with proper housing wow. if the 255 million rand was used for what it was meant for. Wow. And when we look at the water challenges, because seemingly that's one of the primary concerns in some of the communities right now. Here it is, yeah? All over the country, you've seen uh, SABC reporters mm. crisscrossing the country. Almost all of them, mm. uh, these municipalities, and especially the rural municipalities, uh, residents are complaining about provision of water. So if you, if you check there, it says, if we were to use 255 million, and divide it by the cost of one average community uh, borehole. Mm. At least 2,550 2, more water sources, boreholes, could have been dug and communities would be receiving water. Many communities are without water because of corrupt activities. The cost of an average borehole is estimated at 100,000.
Wow. And that's a lot. That's a lot of money. It's a lot. Uh, right now, uh, as we know, the Guiani, over 2 billion rand was used in Guiani yeah. for water provision. Yeah, that's provision. in some of the communities reported to be without water. But they still don't have water. That's the cost of corruption to the service delivery. In Bembe, uh, the service delivery gauge actually went to Bembe, mm -hmm. crisscrossed the whole of Bembe. Communities are complaining there's no water, but dams are full. In Maluta Pufung, it's been on the news since uh, 2018. Communities there are without water, but the nearby uh, country of Lesotho is providing water to Gauteng and all, and all over the places. But the, the communities close, to, close by, they don't have water. Maribeng uh, municipality uh, here in Bretz, they, 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 are, they stay close to the, to the Hartis Dam. But there's no water there. Communities are complaining. Communities are crying. There's no water. These elections are going to be interesting because it's actually about the service delivery and basics, the basic service delivery. They are not asking for refuse removal. They are not asking for uh, fancy stuff. They are asking for the basics. And these 250, 255 million rand could have gone a long way. Wow, and that's, and that's a lot of money indeed. Maswele, uh, you know, it's no secret that, you know, uh, most corruption happens at local government level, which is essentially what we'd call the foundation phase. How do we tighten the bolts to ensure that, you know, we, we, we have a better uh, governance structure there as a researcher? You see, Mkolesi, only if uh, the, the, the councillors and the mayors of these local municipalities were to work according to the book. There's something called the Municipal Finance Management Act. Mm. The Municipal Finance Management Act, like we have in the national, is called the PFMA, a Public Funds Management Act. If everything was done by the book, accountability, Auditor General's report mm. uh, being, being adhered to and uh, recommendations implemented, yeah. we wouldn't be here. But it looks like uh, because there's no accountability, mm. as you can see, there's no accountability. They take these monies, they hire family members, yeah. they don't hire, uh, 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 they don't hire and that's the sense, qualified of course, people the ground, to yeah. these positions. Take, for example, in Bembe. Yeah. Uh, All right, Maswele. One of our researchers found that uh, there right. was no water engineer in the municipality. Wow. Maswele Ralibona, thank you so much. I wish we had more time to unpack, but of course, what do you have to say about the conversations that we're having on the show today? Criselda is up next with another discussion on the show. This is the Daily Service Delivery Gauge. Back after this. Well, it's that time on the show where we get to hear from you. And, uh, of course, uh, we're going to speak also very shortly once again to Micah Makwela, who's, of course, the Senior Program Coordinator at Plan Act, of course, that Asvigelane a project or initiative which is giving voice to informal settlements. Let's go to the first caller on the line. I understand it's Gladman and Dulini from Ekuruleni. A very good afternoon to you, Gladman. Let's get your comment or question this afternoon. Um, good afternoon, and... To the listeners, thank you very much for the opportunity. For the opportunity, my question I'd like to be asked from the people of Akurle: When would they stop the corruption that they, they imposed to the luminant Dali workers? Because the matter has been now the, the workers have been struggling for six years. So I'd like to ask uh, hmm. the relevant people: When are they going to solve the problem? Because right now the, the workers have already opened up a case for fraud and theft against the municipality for, yeah. for using their name. We have proof of that. I'd like to invite as well the show to at least one of the day come to the city of Urland so we can yeah. show what we are talking about. Gladman, thank you very much. Uh, of course, you are raising questions about alleged corruption in Ekuruleni. Uh, let me come to you, Ntate Mike. I mean, this must be something that also comes up quite extensively from communities, also in informal settlements, allegations of corruption against municipalities, saying that's probably part of the reason why they, could, they don't get the relevant services. Do you get that? Well, 
Well, we do get that. Uh, the poor management of public finance mm -hmm. is a serious concern. Mm -hmm. The Auditor General has raised it several times. Um, so it is a concern. You mm -hmm. hear these stories that, you know, uh, corruption has a negative impact on service delivery. It is a reality. Yeah. That's what we've been asking you this afternoon, in fact, uh, to what degree uh, uh, some of that corruption is having on service delivery in your area. Godfrey in Kiva is also joining us now from the Wild Coast. Very good afternoon to you, Godfrey. Thanks uh, for getting in touch with us. What's your comment or question on the show this afternoon? Uh, my comment is, is about the report comes on uh, Wild Coast municipalities. So I know that area quite well in Port St. John's. He says the road leading from uh, Port St. John's into Second Beach is quite filthy and says that uh, people, basically hiring uh, there's, there's friends, there's jobs for friends or pals or even relatives. These are some accusations that are also made against some municipalities in Dada Mike, where uh, there's jobs for people who are unqualified to do the job, but are, are they are sitting and doing nothing. Well, let's look at what the previous uh, public admi um, uh, administration official said, mm -hmm. that 39% of the officials in our country yeah. are either not properly qualified Correct. or placed in wrong positions. Uh, so that is very worrisome mm -hmm. because it translates into poor service delivery, yeah. okay, the provision of services. Yeah. Um, well, you hear these allegations that uh, the caller has just said that, you know, if, I, if I'm not so-and-so, I'll not get a job. Correct. If I'm not closer to uh, so-and-so, I will not even be employed in the EPWT yeah. programs. So those allegations are there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and perception becomes a reality sometimes. Yeah. So we, we need to deal with the perceptions so that we get into the reality. All right, Mike Makwela, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Senior Programme Coordinator at a Plan Act, uh, speaking about that Asvigelani initiative, giving voice to informal settlements on uh, the uh, issues that they're facing in terms of service delivery. Mkolisi? Uh, thank you for that informative interview. Of course, now we take a look at what you have been seeing on our socials today. Can we please load some tweets to look at for today? Pat says, my municipality at Matatiele, I feel like is one of these corrupt municipalities since 2016. Our taps, of course, are not delivering water each and every household and got themselves tanks in order to have water. We, rain, we use water rain, I'm assuming, and we know during winter season we buy water, all this at Gaupa village, and they are expecting our votes. And of course, thank you so much for your participation today. That's all we have time for today. It brings us to the end of the Tuesday installment of the Daily Service Delivery Gauge. This is where we ended. From me, Ngolisi Masango, Chriselda Lewis, and the rest of the team, have a spectacular evening going forward. Cheers.